Hey everybody, welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. We're about to jump into the semifinals of Group That's B. That's right. I'm back. But Frodan's back. That's right. Uh, Greetorp was holding down the fort. Uh, I believe he is in the studio doing some WCS rehearsals for mm. this weekend. It's going to be fun stuff over if you're a StarCraft fan. If you're a Hearthstone fan and a StarCraft fan, well, you get to double up on streams. It's a fantastic weekend for you. Mm if that is the case. But we just saw Chalky take out GCT Turret, so he's going to be the first player Pretty fun moving games on to the finals. Oh, overall. yeah. My favorite was the Mind Blast from the <laughs> Prophet yeah. Dalen. Like, uh, that, that's definitely like a you what mate type of, <laughs> like, what? Yeah, well, yeah. I like the just the Holy Smite to the face. I mean, it was to make sure that right. he emptied his hand enough for the call. Yeah, 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 but it's just funny, you know. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. stuff. Dennis. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, uh, we have another semifinal, and the winner of that goes on to play Chalky for the final spot. And what a crazy turn of events would it be if, once again, we have two players who originally got invited out, Chalky versus Strife Crow. A lot of people feel like, nah, it's rigged. But we promise you, it's not. We have Strife Crow on the right side. He's got that Patron Warrior. He's got that Hunter. He's got that Warlock. <laughs> Lead Paint, in the meantime, he's got his own series of interesting and unique decks. I really like Lead Paint style. Yeah. He's got the Dragon Warlock. I actually thought that Strife Crow wasn't even there, but then I saw him peek his little face up. Yeah. He's, he, just, he's just hiding a little bit. He's just moved, I think, so mm -hmm. he's just getting settled into his new C9 house, mm -hmm. getting all figured out. Is he, in, is he in California now? I believe so. That's sick. Where at? Um, if I had to guess... Um, San Jose, or somewhere around the Bay Area. Oh, uh, he's is, in the Bay Area. That's where C9, like Jack, the C9's manager, is based out of. Uh, gotcha. But, I mean, they could have had a house somewhere else. Uh, I know that he's that's with cool. um, Hi, who is one of C9's, I guess, uh, their head of gaming now or, or something like that. But I'm not actually sure. Uh, but, yeah, it would be interesting. We saw a double invite again. Now, let paint sort of... A different story here. He's slowly getting in better and better as the Legendary Series goes on. He qualified for two weeks of the Legendary Series, almost three. So uh, even if he loses today, he's still got another chance in one of the later groups, either C or D. Um, but he's slowly starting to ramp up. He had a pretty good series early on in the day against Modern Leper. And now he's going to look to secure himself a spot in the finals. Yeah, that's right. Well, if if he can get past Strife Crow, that is. And Strife is just one of the toughest players to get past, although it wasn't exactly the easiest. It came down to a Nailbiter series as well. Yeah. Where Strife goes with. Yep. So we are going to jump into the match. It is going to be Lead Paint's Warrior, and this is a control nah, warrior. It's not just any warrior, TJ. <laughs> it's not a dragon warrior. It is! It's got Ysera and Alex Straza. All right, you you keep telling yourself that, TJ. Okay, if I see a black wing corruptor, TJ zero percent chance QT. Sanders. I will eat one of my shoes. You you promised that as well. Last time we had Kale the Zod pop out needs for the third time. I promised you a lot of things that I've let you down on. There was one point where I actually promised you that I would quit casting forever if you opened a Neptulon in the next pack. Oh, that's that you right. Opened. And then I did. I and then you opened a Neptulon. <laughs> And then I did the same exact thing at the uh, the Aces Streamathon. I predicted a Neptulon opening. Oh yeah. From Force yeah. and it happened. It was a conspiracy theory though. No, everyone's like, you heard that on a delay. <laughs> like someone told you in your ear 15 seconds. I'm like, what? No. No, every Hearthstone tournament is pre-recorded. <laughs> yeah. So they just told you ahead of time. No. When people said that, I was I was really offended. Oh, I was like, I did not. Today. No, I knew because you're the king of calling cards. You're also the king of three damage crackles and two damage lightning storms. Ah. Uh, okay, so while I was on break, I was playing a lot of shaman, and I, I just rolled low every time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when I have like two crackles and it's guaranteed lethal, both of them hit six. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was like all I needed to do was six damage. And I had two crackles, but I would hit twelve. So it's like what? Why? <laughs> Why? I don't even get it. It's the way the world works. This is a frustrating moment because you want to get rid of that armor smith because you recognize the board control potential it has with a cool taskmaster, and this is an appropriate call. Really tough to make it because you just sacrifice your void caller, but it's in the end the right decision considering that his opponent has a cool taskmaster. So yeah, you're also protecting the more important drops in your hand. You don't really the void walker doesn't really have much benefit outside of maybe being buffed up by a direwolf alpha or absorbing a blow for something more important, but. Um, that sets him up for some pretty strong turns with an Imp Gang boss. That's right. And his opponent's going to be using both cool Taskmasters just to get rid of 
this one imp gang boss. It's not even to get rid of the imp. My. Wow. That is juicy. Now, do you go for the juggle? The 50 50, or would you just go for the avoid call? Now you drew the, the Mount Ganus. Mount Ganus, I mean, the Vo avoid caller is more mana efficient. It's worth evaluating. Yeah. But that, that potential tempo swing is just crazy if you get that void caller to pull out the Mount Ganus. Yeah. It's forcing your opponent to have something to deal with it immediately. Or you can just win the game in a few turns. Right. He does have execute, but it's whether or not, I mean. He, He's gonna have to like take a despite swing to the face, um, in order to do so. Ah, no, not so much. I mean, it's, be okay. it's whether or not he um, puts his opponent on having a a demon or not. Yeah. A lot of times you want to be able to summon the demon out so you can control it in your terms and not his. But you can't actually deal with it unless it's like a flame imp. If he pulls Doom Guard, you're in trouble. In this scenario, he's about to pull out Melganis. Yeah. No! Oh! I think you hit. In this scenario, you hit it like. I was going to say nine times out of ten, but. Yeah. <laughs> I go to that phrase so much just because you have execute. So you know, no matter what, well, maybe right. not no matter what, but most of the time, you're going to have a way to deal with it. The only thing that punished you in that situation would have been like. Oh. Loatheb. Juggle on the Taskmaster. Malganus to the face, which forces uh, Lead Paint to attack into these knife juggers. Now, keep in mind that he does get a card draw, so he might be able to even deal with the second knife juggle. And if he can, that'd be great. Oof. Okay. You would have loved to have that at the beginning of the game. Yep. One drop here would be the dream. Still fine. Just go for the Doom Guard. Yeah. Well, it's not as easy as that. Because if you just go for the Doom Guard, yeah, trade in here to try and deny the draw. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to juggle onto the... Exactly, yeah, is yeah. what I meant, yeah. Is that but mean... you do, uh, the Knife Juggler is good damage, uh, I don't know. That's just super greedy if you play the Doom Guard without killing this Acolyte. The downsides aren't that huge. It's saying, well, there's a 50-50 chance that he gets one extra card. The one extra card could be all the difference, though. The second execute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And That's right. he ends up going for it. His opponent picks up Sludge Bells. Your lead paint picks up Shield Slam, and that's not enough at the moment. But next turn, he has Shield Maiden Shield Slam. Yeah. If you're going to play Sludge Bells, you might as well attack in for the draw first to see if that changes anything. Sure. Shoot block might change your plan. You take out the Doom Guard before. But that's not a shield block. Sludge Belcher still blocks a ton of damage, but let me in that 7 health. Oh, oh my. That's yeah. nasty. Hello there. But is it appropriate? Uh, you could. It's more mana efficient to attack into that play implosion. It you would have a 5-4. It's vulnerable to Shield Maiden Shield Slam, which is coming up on turn 7. Uh, if you play RMB Gowl, your opponent has to Shield Maiden Shield Slam and uh, use the Sludge Ball to just suicide him. So it is the better play. This is a, like, a very imp impressive decision on Strife Crew. In fact, he's had a lot of tough turns this game so far. Yeah. Lead Paint has unfortunately been... His, has had his hands tied. He hasn't had the room to make too many other decisions other than just survive. Yeah. And that's usually how it is. Yeah. I mean, I talked about it earlier. A lot of times, Control Warrior, against these more aggressive type decks, they get to, like, sub-10 health before they're able to start to stabilize. Mm -hmm. well, well, in this case, 2 health. Yeah, that's quite low. Oh, wow! Dr. Boom off the top. Now, of course... If his button has big game under and is able to stabilize, that, that's not going to be as high impact as it could be. But these boom bots, I mean, the boom bots might even end the game. Yeah, boom bots could just kill him straight up. Fire Warx is essentially a useless draw since he already has one in his hand. It's basically like yeah. he's in the same position as last turn, just with a little more mana. Just, he's going to have to shield me and shield slam this Dr. Boom down. And then, uh, well, I guess he could get rid of the, the Doom Guard. I'd be really scared to activate the boom bots, though. 
The boom bots are just so scary because they might eliminate the uh, sludge belcher and then you have less resource to fight. Yeah. I can take the this is a tough turn for lead paint for sure, but a lot of it depends. <laughs> Shield slam face. Can't do that. It's too bad, but even then he'd be short lethal. All right. Boom bot time. First you implosion, of course. Yeah. Well, I can't kill him. Okay, life tap into the Haunted Creeper. So most certainly it would be Implosion into Imp Gang Boss. Strongest possible combination. And Strife Crow pretty much has to first use the Implosion and evaluate if he wants to do it. If it's a four, that'd be the best. And he, uh, and he suicides it. Is there another so alternative to, to doing this? No. I mean, you can try and... No. Can't. Okay. Average result. Yeah. Still devastating, considering all things. And Trifco nods in approval. The boom bot hits the face for two damage, maximizing it. And getting four is actually below average. Yeah. And Alex Straza. Alex Straza's pretty big here. Yeah. He's Gave gonna bring 13 life. Bring him back up to 18 effective health. And Shrekko's at that point where he's sort of top decking for for threats here. Whoa! I mean, he, but the thing is, he's got a lot of hard... He's got cards that are hard to remove. The Haunted Creeper and the Void Caller. And he does you keep this power of well, I mean, to push for Lipo, right? You're yeah, not, yeah. like, trading on the board at all? Yeah, there's no... Not really much point to trade into the Alexstrasza yet. If you can't draw into lots of damage in the next couple turns, then that Alex Draza can start to threaten. But at this point, Lead Paint's at a at a in a situation where he has to start, start trading in with his Alex Draza into creatures That's and it. using that eight damage ineffectively. All right, I think we're gonna see a brawl here in just a sec. And if this Alex Draza wins the brawl, that is so big. We were in a situation similar to this earlier in one of the GCT Turf games where he, he had a rag on the board with like a lots of 1-1s on the other side and his rag ended up winning the brawl. Right. But 1-1 one -one is the average result. Well, the very average result at this yeah. point. Use Sergeant is 2 more damage. That's 8 damage on top of the 1. That's 9. 9 damage. For three mana. <laughs> if he draws into Doomguard or something equivalent to it, he can't actually play all this, so he might as well start dumping it. Yeah. Everything, oh man. Power overwhelming doesn't really. Yeah, he might need it in case he needs to push through something. Yeah, but if all, if all your creatures get removed, then you can't Doomguard power overwhelming if you draw to if you draw it the next turn. Mm. So it's kind of a rough situation. Yeah. It feels lose-lose. Because you're giving up the power overwhelming. You're sort of... You're giving up your whole hand saying, Well, this is everything. I'm top decking now. Second brawl. Yeah. GCT Terth also had two brawls in his Control Warrior deck. It seems to be with the popularity of Grim Patient Warrior and uh, Zoo Warlock. Seems to be... It's a, moving towards sta standard. Oh, interesting. Void Terror. So I think Strife Girl also might have Sylvanas in this deck. He's been through so many threats. He's been with Boom, a Doom Guard, Mulganus. He's going to create the biggest threat he can, right? Just with Void Terror, just make it a, an 8 10. Yeah. And Lead Paint has second brawl for this. Or he just has straight up Dr. Boom removal. Yeah. I'm not sure if second brawl would be good because if you second brawl here and his 810 comes out on top, you just lost. Mm -hmm. Gromash oh. doesn't have an activator. Nope. He had the if he had one of his cool taskmasters, he's, maybe, but he's used both cool taskmasters, he's used both shield slams. Not many activators left. Second death bite. What is nice, though, is that he can use Gromash to kill off the 4-4. Four -four. Yeah. Or? Okay. Or? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, now he can use it to kill it off. 
So is there any two card combination? Doom Guard, tap. Uh doesn't have any abuse. Doom Guard, tap, power one. That'd be his only way out. Well, that is something. Void Terror and Doom Guard. Puts him down to two health. This has been again so close. Trying to just end the game. He's pumped out so much damage. There's been so much life gain on yeah. the side of lead paint. He's done 50 plus damage. Yeah. Sarah's not it. Dragon Warrior. I mean, we still haven't seen those last 10 cards. There could be Blackling Corruptors in there somewhere. What tribe does Ysera belong to, TJ? And Alex Straza. Can you remind me, please? Dragon. Yes. What, what class now? is uh, Lead Paint Paying? Warrior. Yeah. It's what not. is that spell? <laughs> it's not a Dragon Warrior. Oh, man. You might as well call it Weapon Warrior, if that's what you're going to do. We could call it Weapon Warrior. Because there's four weapons and only two dragons. It's more weapon war than it is a but dragon. But you have to warrior. call it by its least common card. Okay. Wow, he's gonna live by one HP and drop Sylvanas. That is the best chance. Oh, I guess Emperor Thor's in because he makes everything else cheaper. He's got Sylvanas Brawl too, by doing this. I mean, there's not really any direct damage left. Until his Trifier just whips out a charger. Looks like he's gonna be fighting from behind on the board. Implosion. And Void Walker. If this rolls high in this implosion, it's gonna maybe force a big reaction. Oh. That's a low roll. Actually, that might that's a big deal right there. Because this allows him to armor up, trade into one of these. He'll be at two health with only one damage on the board. Yeah, but the thing is a minion survives, which means he can get buffed by something powerful on me. Yeah, that's true. But otherwise, it would have been lethal no matter what. Like, if he rolled three? Yeah, so he's going to have to get rid of everything. Like, Shield yeah. Samming, this is the, the sa super safe play. Yeah. Oh, I guess if he rolled four, he could have tried to brawl for, for an answer. Yeah, so, yeah, he could have brawled and then killed whatever came out. Super close. Jeez. <laughs> the funny thing Two is, health! <laughs> the funny thing is, lead paint has... Uh-oh, he can't play that. He dies. Uh... I guess he can play it now, or he needs to play it now. Mm -hmm. Is anything going to stick? I'm pretty sure Lead Paint might have just barely, by the skin of his teeth, won this game. Oh, Armor Smith, that is really nice. Yeah. He would have loved to pick up some kind of removal so he can just win the game right here. But looks like Lead Paint has weathered the storm. I think at the end of the day, Lead Paint ended up gaining 60 plus life. Yeah. Because he went through Shield Block, Shield Maiden, Hero Powered, nearly every Leroy. turn. Leroy. Mm. Life tap one more time, but uh, looks like it's not enough. What a crazy back and forth game. That one health. takes the first game. One health he was at at one point in that game. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, uh, but it's okay because it's... Control Warrior, and I think that one was probably the uh, hardest one to overcome. If you have Patron Warrior, you have a Hunter, you have a Zoo. Zoo is definitely his best choice to try yeah. and take it out, but nah, just let it go. Yep. When it, nothing you can really do about that. All right. it, the Warrior was probably going to get a win in the series, no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, Lead Paint still has fine wounds with Warlock, his Dragon Warlock. Legitimate Dragon Warlock, mm -hmm. just to clarify, to be clear. Yeah, it's a Dragon Warlock. Yeah. It's got more than one dragon in it. More than two right. dragons, actually. Uh, yeah, it's got three. <laughs> it's got seven. It's got seven. It's got seven. Oh. Double Azure Drake, double Twilight Drake. Oh, that's right. Double Twilight. Malagos, Alex Straza. Oh, six. Ooh. You know it has Alex Straza? Uh, actually, no. That's right. Yeah. Um, it it might not, but I I had three most of or those five. lists, most of those lists do. Uh, but I we don't know. I th I think most of those lists actually cut Azure Drakes as well. But we'll have to sure. see. Uh, we only saw about eighteen cards in that deck, I think, in the first series. Uh, but Shrekko still has all his decks left. Hunter Warrior, um, Hunter Warrior Warlock. Okay. So then uh, game number two is coming up here. Strife Crow has to win one of these games here. He's going to queue up the Warlock again. Now, the interesting thing about Druid is normally the Warlock's great against Druid. Yeah. But in some scenarios in recent times, Druids have been retooling to try and make their deck better against things like Zoo. So they start putting in cards like Mind Control Tech, or in Lead Paint's example, you start putting Ancient of Wars in. 
and you just completely try to shut your opponent out yeah. on the board. A lot of lists, druid lists, in the, that we've seen in the Legendary series in the past couple weeks, and I guess across competitive play in general, have included at least one copy of Ancient of War. Um, there was a couple players last week that, after I talked to them after, they said, oh yeah, I only had one Ancient of War. Um, I plopped that, that sucker in there. And it does help against those aggro matchups. I mean, Ancient of War can be a win condition. Yeah. If you... Um, yeah, with up if you well, yeah if you uproot it, it's so versatile. You can use it as rooted or uprooted. The the rooted version is like if you get a five ten and they trade two or three minions onto the board, then you just heal it with ancient of lore. It's like you know, lol. You can't do anything. Lol. Yeah, you can't get past the wall. Ancient of war lol. Yeah. 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 I like it. That's actually his username on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Ancient of War lol. Who? Lead paint? No, the Ancient of War. Oh, okay, okay. He's got a Twitter account. That's a novelty account waiting to happen. Oh, I would no. love it if there was a bot, kind of like how there's a, a Napa Twitter bot, where every time you say over 9,000, he done. tweets at you and says, What? 9,000? <laughs> and the same exact thing. Every time everyone talks about Ancient of War, it just tweets you a picture of it being uprooted <laughs> and hitting the face. Or or a gif of it being healed. <laughs> yeah, with, with the upper is funnier. I guess. I guess it is. Strife Crow is going to start off with double Voidwalker. You know what? Not the most powerful double one drop opening, but it works. It's a lot of health. Yeah, it's great if you have a follow-up like Direwolf right. Alpha. Um, and it's actually really threatening Yep. If you think about that scenario, if you're the other player, you're the opponent, and you think about the scenario, well, well what if he has Direwolf Alpha? Yeah. It's kind of like building your own mini Feral Spirits. Yeah. For way less mana. Yep. Way sooner. Yeah. I guess it would With be the demon same. Demon Synergy. Mm hmm All right. Well, one of two big game hunters. Now, unfortunately, there is no hand locks remaining in the tournament. Lead Paint made that read. For double big game hunter, and it worked. Maybe worked out for the first series in terms of his preparation. But if neither of his player, uh, of his opponents in the future will have no. big game hunter targets, then what was he gonna do? Especially not Chucky. Well, I mean, there is Doctor Boom, I suppose. And Chucky could also cold blood and an arcane golem. That is true. He could big game hunter a wolf rider. <laughs> yeah, Chucky has six arcane golems across his three decks. Hmm. It's pretty that, absurd. That is shameless. <laughs> yeah. How do you even deal with this efficiently? If you just wrath for, you just like silence the one two and just let the keeper of the grove go. It's super weird. Normally at this stage, like wild growth keeper or having like innervate keeper early on against oh, zoo is fantastic because a lot of times you're able to just like snipe off a knife juggler or a, a flame imp. But here it's just super ineffective. She's using Wrath to take out a 1-3. Yeah, it doesn't feel that good, especially considering the tempo lost. He spent one mana and you spent two. And your next turn is not looking too great, too. You have Harrison or a big game hunter. Yeah. Well, that's a whiff from Strife Crow, though. Not being able to play anything on turn three is also a pretty big deal. Yeah. Power one is going to be a good card against Druid eventually. Oh yeah, it's one of the best. But not in that context, just because, like you said, not having anything to play. Paladin Treader off the top. Both are really vulnerable to something like a implosion. Yeah. That in a yeah Harrison up. Jones is just ultra uh, weak to it because it doesn't ha leave anything onto the board. But when are you ever going to find time to play Harrison Jones ever again in this matchup? Might as well throw it out while you're under the least amount of pressure right. to try and make it absorb something. It does. It looks like it's going to eat the Voidwalker. Oh, never mind. He's going to go ahead and burst his bubble. Okay. He wants his opponent to swipe next turn. Or feel like he has to swipe or do something. Improving the power onto the board. This is, this is primarily to disrupt the flow from his opponent. Yeah, make the turns awkward. Right, and Lead Paint has a response to the Keep of the Grove. Yeah. The thing is, the Keep of the Grove wants to silence the zero two, and even more than that, he wants to use maintain holding onto the Keeper until his opponent plays Void Caller. Yeah. 
Like those are the higher priorities at the moment. Yeah, that's one of the the strongest ways to play against a druid. Um, druids are very predictable. They have a predictable deck list with predictable power plays and predictable power turns. And sometimes it's not even about rushing them down if you're playing an aggro deck. It's just about making their turns as awkward as possible. Looking at their power turns like turn 7 or uh, looking at the awkward turns that they have like turn 6 and trying to make it so that they play very inefficiently with their cards. Well, a second power of a Wellman can give use to that egg. He's going to avoid using the, um, the implosion again. Just use it as a post-swipe removal card and building the board. I like that strategy a lot, considering that druids can use swipe really efficiently against uh, post-implosion or pre-implosion. No, post-implosion. But after it's been used, like, and there's four 1-1s, one -one, like, how do you deal with that as druid? It's really difficult. So I've got to use both power of overwhelmings. Yeah, but he's trying to snowball the board. Unfortunately, there hasn't been, like, anything more than just tickling every turn. So Druid's had a pretty reasonable health count. Mm -hmm. He's just got double Doomguard in his hand, which is slightly unfortunate. It's going to be tough to play those little guys. I don't know, man. This one's pretty tough. You want to play Dr. Boom next turn. Doomguard, this is one of the best times to Doomguard. Abuse of Sergeant, clear board, Doom Guard. Yep. Hmm. Chances that you distraw or discard. Yeah, you just don't Second want to Doom Guard and, and Doctor Boom. Boom is fifty percent. Yeah. It's half the outcomes have built. That's what fifty percent means. Oh you wait, no, it's thirty-three percent. Excuse me. Is it? Right, because you there's three outcomes. You implosion. And you, you discard Implosion, oh, Dr. Yeah, yeah. Boom, or Doom Guard, and Implosion, or Doom Guard, Dr. Boom. Yeah. Okay, so he hedges his bets here. He's going to instead go for uh, the Guaranteed, where he plays Dr. Boom and then Doom Guard afterwards. Mm -hmm. but, oh, wait, there's also the possibility of Void Caller uh, the next the two cards, and then summoning and then pulling out Doom Guard number two that way. Yeah. That's not as like not that likely. Well, I mean two two void callers in the deck. Probably close to a little more than fifteen cards remaining. So he needs to find a way to trade into something here to find a way to make room for Dr. Boone. Right. Because Dr. Boone was the only play that makes sense right here. I mean it's turn seven. I mean turn seven, strongest play you can Possibly making the entire but he game. Can't unless he, he he trades in almost his entire board to stuff. Would you be okay trading in just a couple minions and then playing Doctor Boom? Uh, it doesn't even really make sense either. You no, might as well just go all the way. Yeah, because then you play and just wipe so so hard. Well, this is a pretty strong board position, but there's a BGH. VG8 swipe would have been fantastic. Doesn't have the luxury. Uh, yeah, it would have been game breaking. Yeah. I've got the beast in my side. Draco just hasn't managed to put on much pressure so far this game. And now he's going to be able to have not only the big body on the board from Emperor Thorsan, but also the chance to reduce the cost of the cards in his hand. And Draco's playing from behind. Hmm. Strife Crow pose. Trying to figure out if you can get away with eating one of these, some of these one ones with the void terror, building up a reasonable void uh, body on it. So many possibilities. But the reasonable body would be like a five-five. Yeah. But so yeah. it looks like he's come to a realization. If you play Imp Gang Boss, Doom Guard. He can utilize it uh, potentially even better. Fortunately, he has to give up that second Doom Guard. All right, Boombot. It's uh, Thorson for three. And that's enough to clear the board. Wow. Yeah, if you tried to use the Void Terror there, he wouldn't have been able to utilize the actual damage from the 1-1s. One he would have just been consuming them. And having the damage be able to spread. Wow, what a turn. 
playing all three of these minions. Really tough. Yeah. He's still healthy. I mean. Oh, man. That's also a good card, too. Oh, that's really awkward card. Wait, he played Big Game Hunter, right? Uh, so if you, like, if you, like, taunt up and then... Um... Void Terror. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You can taunt the both minions. Yep. The Game King boss can hit into I the um, Pilot Shredder. It will spawn a 1-1 one -one to the right, and you can eat the Defender of Argus and the 1-1. One -one. Yeah. So then the Void Terror becomes a 6-7. My seal for I like that. Or you could just go face, then eat the Dr. Boom and the Defender of Argus. That's nasty. That's pretty brutal. Succubus. Second worst outcome. Yeah, although it's effectively the same as Millhouse Manistone. Yeah. The four attack. I think uh, you might opt to have to trade into that, but hitting face is really hard to pass up. Oh, actually, yes, six, seven, uh, yeah, it might be better to do that. Yeah, at the same time, well, no, you have to go face because you, you're running out of burn in the deck. He discarded second Doom Guard. There's not going to be yeah. many other opportunities it's for him to get face trade. damage in. You need, you're really trying to make that Void Terror the key, but... I, I mean, Leadpaint has the exact cards he needs. He's got Wrath for one push. He's got Silence on the Void Terror. Yep. Dude, Druid's about to beat the zoo. How much damage is now, this? I thought Druid was like the class which Strifecrow would target to try and beat. Mm. That's actually really close to lethal. 10, 13. It's 20 damage, I think. 21 damage. With hero power, yeah. I must it's close, but he's still in a fantastic position. Lead Paint is pretty close to securing a 2-0 lead. He'll have three opportunities if he closes out this game to find a win with Warlock. Dragon. Three opportunities to find a win with Dragon Warlock. Dragon Warlock. That's giving himself some pretty good, ch pretty good odds, pretty good chances. And the Trap Crow will be on the ropes. I don't think there's any way out for him. Yeah. Lethal being represented. Oh. Well, Morganis buys him some time. It does. The thing is that it trades onto the board. If the opponent picks up Ancient of... Well, I was going to say Ancient of Lore. But Ancient of War... Uproot! Uproot! It. Uproot! Uproot! Look at him. He's smiling. Oh, he knows. He wants Do it. Do it. He gives us the look. Yes! Oh! Lead paint. I love you. The fan favorite. My greetings, indeed. Sorry, we just like completely collectively broke everybody's speaker slash headphones. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I guess it wouldn't have mattered either way. Just ruined the party. Strive, girl. Don't be that guy. Come Let on. him win. Come on. All right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, six. Is that lethal? Yes, it is. All Hit the right. face with swipe, and that's going to do it for game two. Not only has, has he taken a two-game lead, but he's also accrued quite a large amount of swag points in the process. Oh, yeah, man. He plays Malikos in this dragon deck. So yeah. crying out loud. Or, sorry, this warlock deck. He's, also, he's, he's feeling pretty positive. He's also wearing quite a nice sweater as well, he which is. is very classy for a, a Hearthstone tournament. But Light Bane's one game away from securing a spot in the finals against Chucky. That's right, and if he goes on and beats Strifegro, he beats Chalky, he gets to the land. I kind of want to see Lead Paint. We've, we have some good names. We have Raynad, we have Kalento, we have Life Coach. It'd be cool to see Chalky, but uh, you know, I want to see more of what Lead Paint has to offer. He clearly yep. has, he clearly has some style points. I like it. Yeah, and I mean, there's always a, I'm always rooting secretly, of course. You got to stay slightly unbiased as a caster, but I'm always rooting for the players that make it to the open bracket multiple times. Right. That's a tough feat. Wait. So if Lead Paint gets through today, then uh, he just they just whoever have six hit, players on Friday. Yeah, whoever his opponent or was Sunday. Yeah, whoever his opponent was would get a buy in that round. Um, so whoever is a whoever, of course we don't we'll release the bracket until the day of, and we don't even make the bracket until after the deck lists are submitted. But whoever his future opponent would be is rooting for yeah. Lead Paint. I guess well, I all guess of the, Group D. Every, everyone in Group D is yeah. like, yes, do it. One less opponent. Man, good stuff.
Yeah. Well, Strife goes down 0-2. Uh, he has to win three games in a row, and that's going to be pretty dang hard. Um, part of what makes Handlock really good is just the consistency of it. Because you can tap so much. Although I'm not sure. I don't know this deck at all. In fact, I kind of want to just go play and see how the deck does and report back. The Dragon Warlock? Yeah. Okay. The Dragon Warlock. All right. Well. Trevor's going to try to queue up his uh, zoo once again. Good luck, Dan. I can hold it down. Report back your results before the match is over. Yeah. I don't know. Trevor looks a little tired, too. A little yeah. flustered. You know, maybe building the, the beds all through Ikea and stuff has been a little challenging. Not as comfortable as he'd like to be. But in a couple of months, it'll be as good as new. You'll like your home, Strife Girl, I promise. Oh, Ikea is like a day-long event. Oh. He's got Sea Giant in that deck. And he hasn't drawn it all series long yet. Yeah. Could have really used that. Didn't even see it in the series that he played earlier as well, so... It's been in the bottom ten cards of his deck most of the time. It definitely has only one, and it makes sense given the uh, the one ones tokens that are spawning through Hunter Creeper and um, the Imp Gang boss. Yeah. Speaking of, Lead Paint is ready to go. He's got Dark Bomb, Hellfire, and Imp Gang boss. That is one heck of a curve to start things off. He also has one other card that we can't quite see at the moment. The coin. No, there'd be another one. I hope it's like Emperor Thorson, so he just draws his uh, Malinkos. It was Defender of Argus. Ooh, that's nasty. Why do you fall? All right, so Lid Paint looks like he's just going to pass over. Hey, Emperor Thorson. <laughs> now he's the, the Malikos. The king of calling cards returns. Now he's the Malikos. Oh, man, talk about the Clash of the Titans. We got Void Caller. And Malganus combination. So we really do need Malagos and Emperor Thor. If Malagos is the next card, okay. No, it's, it's not. But he, need, he has so many t t time or turns to get it. Yep. He, doesn't need, he actually doesn't really want it now. Yeah. He well, wants it in like four turns from now. It would activate his dragon cards. He does need a dragon eventually. Uh, uh, if he starts drawing into Black and Corruptor. Yeah, that's true. Um, so do you put out Imp Gang Boss here? Just to start challenging the board a little bit? Uh, Imp Gang Boss plays into Power Overwhelming pretty heavily. <laughs> <laughs> One card too late. Yeah. A little bit early, but we we got it. We oh. did it, TJ. You know what would be great? Emperor Thorsan. You know what would be even fantastic? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, well, Malagos. But, but the thing is, he now has to draw into like, his other stuff like Soul Fire. Yeah. Or Second Hellfire. <laughs> so there's no chance of him getting that. Implosion is pretty good to start controlling the state of the board, but uh, I guess you're really concerned overall about like how you're using your mana and stuff. Imp Gang Boss challenges the board, but it's unfortunately going to get punished pretty heavily by Defender. Mm -hmm. He does have lots of ways to deal with um, like cleaning up a, a board from Zoo here. Mm -hmm. Especially since he's held onto the coin. He has like Hellfire, Mortal Coil, um, Hellfire, uh, Dark Bomb if he wants to wait a turn. It's got quite a few options. I wonder if Strife Crow is going to. Okay. I was like wondering if he was going to consider the Void Caller, considering he does have Malcanus. This juggle is a little annoying for sure. Because it misses a damage. He has to clean up effectively on both ends. <laughs> and now we'll see a nice little Mortal Coil. Oh, so far. How about it? He just needs a second Hellfire, and he'd be he'd be pretty good. Yeah. He'd be like, there's nothing really Strive can do at that point. Yeah. He also needs some direct removal, so that if his opponent draws Doom Guard, he can Siphon Soul it. But I don't think he has Siphon Soul in this deck, right? Um, we didn't see one. It might be good for direct removal, since the deck's all about buying time until you draw into like pieces. So I think it would make sense to have one of them. Yeah. But we we haven't seen one yet. He's debating here whether or not um, he wants to use like Mortal Coil Implosion, Mortal Coil so throw away the coin and Implosion, or Hellfire. Hell Hellfire leaves you with a 4-4. Mortal Coil, Coil and Implosion would leave you with like the 1-2 egg plus a Defender of Argus. But you're going to have to pop that egg eventually. Mm, so two demons, two feisty demons waiting on the other end of Void Caller. His opponent needs the Iron Beak Owl in order to deal with that appropriately. Um, a heal to the antique heal bot will be useful later on, but in the meantime, 
It's time to summon the power of Ragnaros. It's a pretty right? good hand to reduce the cost of. Bring Malagos down to eight. Bring Soulfire back down to pre-nerf status. Oh, he goes for implosion. And he hits for three. Wow. Decent outcome. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't... Okay. That's Draws even really L. good, too. He gets the out. Yeah, this also doesn't allow the Void Caller to trade in. So he, he was giving himself more okay. time. To draw into Owl. Is he really going to go for like an OTK turn? Where he, so he's going to play Thorson on six. And his opponent, so he'll get Mally Ghost to, with, uh, on turn eight, and he can coin out Soulfire and Dark Bomb for 17 damage. You're nodding a lot, TJ, with eyes wide open. It's, yep. It's a little bit scary. It happens more often than you'd think with this, with this deck. You keep saying that, but this is like the... If, this, you've seen this deck a lot in action. Yeah. You've played this deck. No, I watched Nyria play it for like hours. Gotcha. The other day. And I've also played against a couple people on live who, who, who were playing it. Probably who watched Nyria as well. Gotcha. Oh, there was someone else who was playing it on stream, but I just can't remember who it was. And I hate when that happens. Because I always love to give credit to players that played things before they were cool. Um, mm, man, this is actually a lot of pressure, too. Thorson is not safe to drop down here, considering the Void Caller is still not dealt with. Yeah. So if you drop the Iron Beak Owl and silence it, what does that leave you? It leaves you with four mana? Defender of Argus? Then you just Defender and trade? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so he gives up his Dark Bomb. The Dark Bomb uh, is a huge burst, but I think... Um, you know, you just have to really control the state of the board here. I can understand parting ways with it. Oh! Well, that's why Strife Girl and his Doom Guard pairing up here. Yeah, that's actually really bad. Now that the Void Caller is silenced? Yeah, Void Caller silenced. And, I mean, there's no way that he can maneuver this without, like, giving up at least either second Doom Guard or Malganus. Unless he waits until he can throw out Mal. Oh! No! That is brutal. Ouch. He gets power overwhelming at least, I guess. He did nine damage, but now Gannis would have been really problematic because then uh, he can't actually kill him. He has to use like soul fire on the now Gannis. Yeah, that is definitely brutal. Ah, Strife grows like really paused. I think he wasn't anticipating that happening. Grant, the Doom Guard play was. Uh, Still, like, really hard to, to swallow. Like, he had to do it because he needs to get board presence here. Yeah, it was pretty necessary. So Does you it... kill off the, the Chow, kill off the 1-1 the one -one and attack face, or do you just go all face? I think you might want to use the zombie Chow as sort of, like, an investment, so to speak. Yeah, but it, when gives, he him sets stronger, up a combo. it gives him stronger ability to fight back on board yeah. against the Guard. Yeah. Since that's your only Doom Guard left, you want to try and protect it as much as possible. It's a nice pickup. Mortal Coil and Emperor Thorson. It allows him to draw another card. Ooh, Twilight Drake. That's also acceptable. I just want him to drop the Emperor to get this crazy Malagos <laughs> combo. Mean, come on! Emperor has to come out eventually, but he might be right. waiting for multiple pieces of burst. Like yeah. He might be waiting for like second Soul Fire, like yeah. Dark Bomb. Yeah, it might be. Because reducing Malagos is great and all, but... If he's only reducing one piece, one other piece, it doesn't seem as effective. No, but what he has a coin. Yeah, that's true. And he's reducing two parts of it, so it already goes down to just eight mana. Yeah. All right. Five, six, eight, twelve. Ooh, he was pretty close to lethal. He Let is. Me, like covers his eyes. He is pretty close to lethal. Yeah. He's thinking, oh, there's a, a couple things play. here. He's too damage off. I think Strifeco is also evaluating if he wants to put his opponent at two, so that way he can't even tap. Mm -hmm. But so he has to give up something, like his Haunted Creeper tokens. Haunted Creeper is not that terrible to give up. And making him not be able yeah. to tap. Because you're not too worried about Emperor Thorsen getting multiple turns of value if your opponent can't tap. Because if you put him at two anyway, he's going to be forced to trade the Emperor Thorsen in anyway. So, so I don't think that trading is really beneficial at all for Strife Crow here. Yeah, well, he ends up going for it anyways. 
and he's just going for as much dominant board position as possible. Doomguard to the face. Lead Paint might have to drop Maligos here in Soulfire. <laughs> Unless he plays Antique Heal Bot in Defender of Arc. Uh, it's kind of mediocre. He can also double Heal Bot. Bring yeah. himself back up to 24. So many possible. Yeah, actually, all these options are pretty bad. Heal Bot Defender is probably your best chance. Is he going to be really greedy and just go Twilight Drake and heal bot? T, so put him then, at 16 with uh, 9 damage staring at him on the board. Yeah, I guess that's maybe not too greedy. He's ready to use the power of a Wilming. Yeah. And he got rid of the second Doom Guard. Yep. In Melganus. So he's got Iron Beak Owl on the Twilight Drake. And then he's got Implosion afterwards. And that. That spells disaster if, it, if this rolls high. Yeah, he looks like he's in a position where next turn he is going to have to give up Malagos and, or well, give up Soulfire in combination with the Malagos in order to clear out this Doom Guard because it doesn't look that, like there's any other way he's going to be able to get through that. I mean, unless he draws into so many possibilities. Um, see if he draws into second Soulfire. And Dark Bomb. Here we go. Oh! oh. <laughs> Four, two. Wow, that was really disappointing. <laughs> Implosion. Yeah. And then Lead Paint, on the other hand, Blackwing Corruptor. Huh. But he's still taking a lot of damage. The Doom Guard's gotten a lot of attacks in. And he still has to deal with the Doom Guard. You can't just leave that thing up. What can you do this turn? On turn 10, you can Maligos Coin Defender Soulfire. So if that's the case, should you play the Antique Heobot and Blackwing Corruptor now so that way you can do that next turn? See, if he Blackwing Corruptor takes out the Defender of Arcus, right. um, plays the Antique Heobot, brings himself up, back up to 16 with 10 damage on the board. 6 damage. His opponent has to find 6 damage with 2 cards in hand already. So that's Sergeant. pretty risky. Abuse of Sergeant Power overwhelming. Yeah. But the next turn, the benefits of it would be great. Yeah. Maligos. Maligos, Coin, Defender, uh, Soulfire. And how do you get through a, a 5? A especially when you use an Iron Recall already? Yeah. A 513? 513. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going for this. Ease up so far ahead that I think you can take a risk like this. Yeah. Heelbot, shoot the defender. And pray that he doesn't have the two card combination, which Striker doesn't have it yet. There's also there's a slim chance that he can draw into lethal as well. If he draws into Dark Bomb and taps into Soulfire. That would be enough damage with Malagos. Is it would just be a fifty fifty for the uh, second Soulfire to discard. Mm-hmm. So, there's still possibilities for miracles to happen. Well, but he may not even need them. Yeah, it's going to be tough for sure. I think you, uh... I you don't have any other buffs, so you can't kill the Blackwing Corruptor easily without giving up pretty much all the small minions. Yeah. That's, that's like the effect of Implode. You didn't kill the minion. You have less uh, tokens to utilize. He played Flame as well, so now there's one damage spell needed. Well, he still has to get through the uh, the Doom Guard, right? He doesn't have to get through anything. He can play Malagos, Soul Fire, and then have just drawn to one spell. Oh, I thought he needed the Black the Blackwing Corruptor to hit the face or something. No, 16 health. He can Malagos, Soul Fire, Dark Bomb. Malagos, Dark Bomb, Soul Fire. Oh, you're right. Or Malagos, Soul Fire, Soul Fire. Yeah. He it wouldn't be Mally Dunk, <laughs> Strife Crow. <laughs> It's still not over. Oh wait! Oh, you're right. You're right. He has not discarded the other soul fire. Or, but there was a rule once upon a time, TJ. I believe it was a law called the law of soul fire. He can tap because he does have the coin. Ah, uh, that's so risky. Oh, it's so risky <laughs> considering that you could just Mally Ghost coin defender soul fire and go for the, the guarantee. <laughs> but if he wants to, for the the sex appeal. He's up 2-0 in the series. 
a slight... He really doesn't need to do this. Let's be real here. But a slight smile inches across his face. He is a part of the team Grand National Champions. You don't get that title for just being a mediocre Hearthstone player. A team run by Casey Tron. Uh-oh. It's decision time. All right. Yeah, okay. He's going to be the safe play. Mm. There's really no need, TJ. <sighs> Don't throw it away. But this is, this is I would love for him to do it. Don't get me wrong. Don't misinterpret me. I would love for him to try to just go for this. <laughs> oh. I mean. Oh, he's no! doing it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. You can, you, got, you can coin Defender still, though. Okay. But now he can't take out the Doom Guard. My shield. That yeah. is... Oh! oh. Strifegar, you have dodged the Golden Bullet there. Ace Abusive the Sergeant, how much is that? He's not, he's not gonna get through 13. Uh, okay, let's just count straight up damage. He's got 10, 13, 5, that's 28 health. That's not enough. <laughs> he's got 6, 12, 13, <laughs> 15, 19 damage. Yeah, he's going to be short by like 9 points. Yeah. He actually can't even get through. Oh, no, he can with implosion. But here's the thing. Uh, neither player really wants to be tapping much here. Nope. Even though Lead Paint did not win the game from that. Yeah, he went for it, man. Mad respect for it. This guy is really cool. Jeez. All right. Implosion has to hit for as high as possible. No more twos. No more two pointers, Strife Grow. Gotta be clutch. Three. All right, well, three. He can he can kill it. Yeah, three kills allows him to kill it. And he actually summons the in game boss here. Puts himself in a rather strong board position. And now that paint's like, I hate my life. He's got a tap. Yep. No dragon! He gave it up! <laughs> oh. There's hope for Strife Grow! Lead Paint's starting to see his tournament life flash before no, his eyes. No, I really hope that doesn't cost him because that would be so devastating. I would be I'd be crushed on his behalf. A, a I, Strife Grow's one of my good friends here in the industry, and I really like seeing him succeed, but man, Lead Paint, he, he won my heart, man. He really tried to go for it. He did. He, he went for the 50-50 so far. To, well, not 50-50, but it was a one and three. Like the one and three. Yeah. But um, in the sense of like, it, you know, does he end up winning yeah, yeah. here or not? And he just went for the discard. Oh, I can't believe it. As opposed to using Devender Vargas soul firing right for the guarantee guaranteed discard on the second soul fire, but well, you're taking out the sixth off damage. The, the the doom guard. Yeah. Well, he's still got two more chances. Strife Girl still has warrior and um. Hunter left to still find victories with. I, I really thought that was the end of the series, TJ. I had this weird feeling. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I guess I was wrong. You, you said it, the law of soul fires. Yeah, actually, that's true. I don't even know why he tried to defy science. This is what happens. Yeah. This is what happens. A lot of respect, though. There's Warrior and Druid remain. Or sorry, the Warrior and Druid are done. There's Warlock still. Uh, Strifeco has his Warrior and Hunter. And the hunter is going to be hard to deal with, I think, um, yeah. for lead paint. And then we might go into a warrior versus handlock to finish things off. Which I have to side with um, the, the handlock, right? The handlock's got hellfires. It's got dark bombs. Yeah. It's not a traditional handlock. No sense. It's true. It doesn't have the big taunt minions like the, the mountain giants. doesn't have the huge threats. It's got twilight drakes. That's relatively huge. All right, he's going to throw out the Hunter first. I mean, he's got to win with both, so it's not like it makes too much of a difference. But the whole argument of momentum and just possibility that Lead Paint might be on tilt from the last game, um, just sort of regretting his decision to go for the, the risky play for the win as opposed to the safe play for the possible win. And it's possible if Strike Crow just rolls over his Warlock with the Hunter here that Lead Paint might be... Let's go hunt. In uh, oh, in bad spirits okay. going into the last match. Well, there is some there is some tech to help him. He's got that Swedish Swamp Ooze. Uh, maybe that can help him disarm the weapons from Strife Crow. But it's generally a little tough to stop the direct damage from Hunter. Yeah. And you don't even have Molten Giants on your side. 
So I'm leaning towards the hunter here, but then uh, I've been surprised in the past by many things. Yeah, I I would lean towards the hunter as well in this case. He does have double heal bot, but with this more face oriented mid range hunter, I don't think double heal bot will even help him that much. A damage is not tough to come by when you're playing this deck. Keeps the use. Well, he does find a Dark Bomb. Dark Bomb and so far, two ways to remove minions, but it's going to be damage inefficient most likely. Not a bad opening hand. Lepernome is a mad scientist into an abusive sergeant. And no, uh, no mortal coil, unfortunately. Okay, so, oh, the Equal Horn Bow comes in the hand, which means that there is a Swidic Swamp Ooze. Uh, there's value there. Yeah. Pretty big value. Stripe Girl might be expecting to get more value out of that with the trap as well. Right, Imp Gang Boss. But then, if your opponent has Imp Gang Boss, uh, you have to... Oh, wait, no, he gets the 1-1. One, one. I was like, what about the Freezing Trap? But the 1-1 one, one allows the... Mm -hmm. Would you? I think you guess you can use abusive sergeant here then, unless you just want to go the bow, just for maximum damage because you want to try to get that six damage in as soon as possible. Yeah, there's also a lot of merit to weaving in hero power as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the abusive sergeant is their best bet. Yeah. So this deck plays more. Base hunter is rewarded more for weaving in hero power early on. Whereas a lot of time, a mid-range hunter want like a creature or right. some type of board-oriented play to play on turn t on turn three. Um, this deck feels wow. like it plays sort of a mixture of both. Yep. Um, that, that's a good draw, by the way. It's Mortal a fantastic board. draw. But he needs to get closer to a dragon, by the way, because of the, the Blackwing Corruptor. <laughs> He's got a lot of dragons. He's got five dragons. Yeah, five dragons. He does play Siphon Soul. It's a possibility for more dragons, but five dragons that we've seen for sure. Because that was the first time we saw the Siphon Soul in two matches where he went pretty deep in his deck. So there's a possibility that there's a big dragon hiding from us. Do you spend any of these cards here to remove the Mad Scientist? So Swamp Ooze is going to be like, it's just full of regret if you see your opponent play a weapon. Yeah. But this is saving potentially, what, it'd be four damage to the face by using that Dark Bomb. Freezing Trap! I believe that's the only trap that he runs. Huh. Freezing Trap. Freezing Trap's always so risky against a deck that has, like, antique heal bot against you. Yeah. Usually, uh, yeah, against Handlock, it's... Awkward like, a lot of times because they can just use Defender of Argus, right, or Taunt or Up, Sun Fury Protector. or Sun Fury Protector. Just wait a turn with their wall and then use their Taunt or Upper. Oh, that's taunter. a good draw. Although it's still problematic because of the Freezing Trap. Hmm. This is going to be a lot of damage over the next couple turns. Right. And it almost doesn't even matter if you have Weapon Removal, you just got more damage to follow it up. Yeah. This just feels like a, an uphill battle for Lead Paint. There's just so many ways for him to get punished or having slow hand. Doesn't have a dragon to proc the Blackman Corruptor. No, but he can play the Antique Heal Bot, and that's going to force his opponent to attack into the Heal Bot because he doesn't want it to uh, get bounced back for the Freezing Trap. So it's effectively like gaining 11 life as opposed to Eight. Unless Lead Pain activates this now, but he he doesn't. Okay. More damage. That's a butt ton of damage. This is really hard to pass with the Eagle Horn bow, killing off the uh, antique heal bot, and then shoving with I guess Wolf Rider. Yeah. You don't want to give him more mana earlier on. Yeah, both have to hit the face eventually, so Wolf Riders, just get it out of the way. Brutal, that's so much damage. Ouch. Might be tied to Siphon Soul. It's basically a useless draw. And I think, to be honest, 
No, you wait until next turn to proc the freezing trap. Oh man, and Savannah Ooh, high main. That's so tough to deal with. Let's see. But you can also hit for how much this turn? 8? 10? Hero power? Yeah, I guess it's better to high main just because of more damage next turn. I don't even mind swinging with the bow here. You already have two weapons. That acidic swamp was even though it was supposed to help. It is not helping. Well, there's a dragon to activate the Black and Corruptors, but I think it's too little too late. Lead Paint looks devastated. Well, the Hunter is like a really tough matchup. So it's really about whether or not you can destroy the Warrior. Yeah. You have the Acidic Swampoos, so you can stop the Death Spite. It looks really tough, though. I mean, he's, he's starting to look to feel like you were saying. He was up 2 0. Shrefko starts to come back. Renal looks like he's been around a little bit too much lead paint. So many possibilities. Wow. I was really reaching there. Yeah. You reached in deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can't foul out, though. Don't worry. Blackwing Corruptor, just to save a little bit of health. And uh, maybe even have soul fire. I guess dark bomb as well. So this is just something where he just tries to stay alive as long as he can, but can't really do so. This is uh, six. Uh, That's lethal. Seven. Yep. Wow. All right. Well, Strife Crow is going to tie the series up at two games apiece. And lead paint on the verge of lethal in the last game. Wow. Is now going to fight in a game five for his tournament life. That is rough. And that's going to end it. So Strifeco ties it up. We once again are going to game five. We can't find a more appropriate way to end this series. Strifeco goes for a bathroom break. And uh, we might need a little bit of time before we get into the next game. So TJ. Hey. How does this deck do against the, the patron war in your opinion? I don't know. Don't know. All right. Well. What do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think about this Dragon Warlock deck? Hope you guys are having fun. Uh, make sure to tweet at ESL Hearthstone on Twitter and hashtag HLS. Let us know what your thoughts are on the match. Cheer for Lead Paint or are you cheering for Strife Crow? I mean, at this point, I'm cheering for both. But I, I kind of want to see how far this Maligos deck can go. More importantly, can it like stand up to the threats that that Jockey's putting out with his aggression. Yeah, it's going to be tough for that deck to take a win, even if he moves on to the finals. But it's really cool to see um, him sort of break the mold with Warlock. I'm starting to think, I think thought about it for the last, like, four seconds while you were plugging mm -hmm. the, the Twitter there. And I have to think that maybe it's it's going to be okay. Hellfire is a pretty key card in being able to dismantle Patient Warrior. Sure. Um, and Dark Bomb. Dark you know, Bomb that, as well. That's three damage, and you have... Uh, Acidic Swampoos. Yeah, the Acidic Swampoos, so you tech even further against it. Blackman Corruptor can, yeah. can buy you some time as well. So there are answers. It's whether or not the answers line up. That's right. In time. Yeah, that's right. All right, well, here we go. And it's not even going to be one of those uh, fill-in-the-blank questions where you can get partial credit. It's multiple choice, and you get it or you don't. Yeah. That that's was true. deep. That was really deep. Winner moves Maybe on. Maybe life is a multiple cho choice question, TJ. I think there's multiple answers to life. I think life is a short answer question. God. I was terrible at those, like, a short answer, and it's like the right, like, 50 words or something like that. Yeah. I was good at those. I guess I could bullcrap my way through a short answer question. See, everyone thinks they can, but the reality is, like... You can't bullcrap your way through life. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Profound moments here at the Hearthstone wow, Legendary You are series. a natural born caster. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out then. <laughs> well, final match. Lead Paint versus Strife Crow. Game number five. Winner moves on to the finals to face Chalky. And have a chance at going on to the Legendary Series Season 2 Land Finals. Loser goes home or stays home with nothing. Well, here we go. He's got the... Ah, that's kind of like an awkward opening hand on both sides. 
You don't really keep Soul Fire in your opening hand, right? You want to just get stuff like M Gang Boss control the the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in M Gang Boss. You also want to get your two dim two attack creatures out of the way early. Mm, yeah, Father Berserk is a good card for Strife Crow, at least in my opinion. It's also thinking about whether or not Grim Patient is a good keep in this situation. There are some decks where you keep Grim Patient, like in the mirror matchup, keeping Grim Patient is good because a lot of times the first player to get Grim Patient on the board has a significant advantage. Yeah. But against this deck, I don't know. It's the Grim Patient is just very susceptible, so he goes ahead and throws away everything. Gonna be looking for weapons. Oh, there it is. Twilight Drake to start things off. He also has sort of an Azure Drake on reserve. He can, That's use, right. he can keep that in there to either draw cards or maybe even activate some Black Ring Corruptors. Black Ring Corruptors will be pretty clutch. That's another important card, too. In the meantime, Strife Grow doesn't really have, like, an Acolyte of Pain. Um, are people, people have really cut the No Mission Vendor, right? Yeah. Uh, Piloted Shredder seems to be a reasonable replacement for No Mission Vendor. Um... It's a, a strong body, doesn't draw into anything more, but a lot of times the strong body m goes a lot further than being able to draw into one more card. All right, so here we come all the way around. I think chat just got caught up on what happened in the Malikos yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to admit, man, that lead paint has some huge balls. Yeah. Gosh. The cojones. Cojones of steel. Yeah. No weapon to deal with this Earthering Farseer. So he's just got to let it go, I guess. Do you play the Armorsmith? Yikes. Yeah, like, doesn't you, really do much. You don't really want to play Frothing Berserker because that plays right into um, Mortal Coil. Yeah, Mortal yeah. Coil and Armorsmith play into it. You don't really have anything else to get to. Yeah. So which one do you value more, Armorsmith or Frothing Berserker? I say Frothing Berserker, so Armorsmith seems to be a reasonable choice throughout. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm okay with it. Just letting, like, just putting something on the board so you're not just uh, letting your opponent snowball it. Twilight Drake, though, follow up is pretty dang hard to it's deal with, unless you get execute. Quite problematic. Well, that execute could have a lot of value later on, but I guess getting rid of what's on the board. Warsong Commander, that's good. Hmm. But it's going to be quite a few turns before you can activate this to really make big moves. It's really rough to have not drawn into a weapon in the first, right. what, eight, nine cards. Does he have to play uh, Dread Corsair just for four mana? Yeah. If he didn't play it's Froth kind of funny. If he didn't play Froth and Berserker last turn, he's not, definitely not going to play it this turn. Yeah, it's a combo piece. Let's see, with Warsong Commander and Frothing Berserker, and let's say like four minions are on the field, he's got Inner Rage for uh, an extra three damage plus whirlwind for four. It's ten damage burst. So that's ten damage burst. Yeah. Go interrage this so we can go into the uh, the Earthering Bars here. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. I, must I, I mean, I'm not too big of a fan, honestly, of giving up the interrage like that, but. I can understand why Strifeco did it. Doing it because you just don't want to let your board get too out of control. Like, your opponent's just going to start push punishing you too hard. Yeah. And there's these minions are also not susceptible to the Grim Patron. They're all three attack or higher. Mm -hmm. Slam is pretty decent, but if he doesn't draw anything that he can use to sort of... You need some jam with that slam. Mm. Didn't get it. Nope. And now the question is... What does he do here? He either passes or and just armors up or plays cool Taskmaster and Whirlwind. He's just going to pass and armor up. Yeah, he doesn't have any. He just has combo pieces. That's it. This is sort of scary for Lead Paint, though. He's thinking, oh, my God. What does he have? Malagos is drawn, and he's actually putting on pressure. He doesn't, I don't know if he needs Malagos this game. No. <sighs> Still a lot of damage. Okay, so it's one of those things, too, where Strifeco... Needs like Emperor Thorson or something to start having an opportunity to clear. I don't think he's playing the commander's shot, right? So Probably if, not. If he doesn't have it, then it's going to be really difficult to clear this board. And of course, Lead Paint will be really cautious to avoid playing cards like Zombie Chow. 
Yeah, the zombie child is probably just going to sit in the hand for the rest of the game. 4, 8, 12, plus 2 soul fires. Oh, they're going to hit. That's uh, 22 plus a hellfire. That is 4. That's 26. Oh, okay, yeah, it's spell power. Yeah. No, 27. 27. From the two drakes. Grim Patron Double Whirlwind? Oh, Grim Patron, cool Taskmaster. Okay. So he's going to use the Grim Patron to try to control the state of the board a little bit. He just wants to trade down. And then uh, he's going to want the Frothing Berserker with Warsong Command as his finisher. But we have another chance here, TJ, at Redemption. All righty. That, if this is going to be the Soul Fire, no are you kidding me? <laughs> Lead Pain's face is just absolutely <laughs> brutal. Oh. He's that is just I, I don't even know what to say at that one. That is Strife absurd. Girl, how do you have no reaction? Are you alt tabbed? You better be watching the most entertaining cat video on YouTube of all time. <laughs> Cause that was gold. You gotta be kidding me, man. That was a one in eight chance one in nine chance for him to have lethal <laughs> Mortal Coil for three not bad though all right well I mean regardless of this <laughs> Lead Pain is still in a pretty decent spot here yeah uh, that was a mistake because you could have Mortal Coil the second Grim Patron been able right. to preserve two yeah. more even the Mortal Coil for for uh, three damage it feels nice and fancy but right right sometimes you got to look at the practical use Oh, jeez. Trafford just doesn't have enough uh, damage, right? No. Okay, so what could he do here? He could Warsong Commander, Unstable Ghoul, and Whirlwind. Right, and that clears that two clears. Of minion. Yeah. He Whirlwinds again, he clears it. No, he, he clears yeah, Whirlwinds again, he clears everything, but he just gives up his win. Yeah. If he plays... Because he's dead next turn, right? Yeah. If he doesn't clear everything, then um, as no. What now? Well, he's dead next turn if he doesn't clear anything. Right. But if he clears Big Game Hunter and Twilight Drake, he's not dead. It's just too expensive. Everything's just too expensive. Yeah. And also, not only expensive in the mana cost, it's expensive in the the cost. Uh, the effective cost for him to to be able to close out the game still if he uses all these resources. Lead paint's still not over that Soulfire discard, TJ. Nope. I've seen some heartbreak in my time. That is nightmare worthy. I'm not even lead paint, and I'm gonna have nightmares about that situation. Like the animation I mean, of Soul. If he ever becomes, like, I'm pretty sure Taylor Swift saw that and is writing a song about the other Soulfire <laughs> right now, just to remind that Soulfire of what it did. Yep. Well, Black and Corruptor lines up quite nicely with this. Mm, yeah, I th uh, that's going to be four damage. To the face still not enough, but it's also getting to the point where just like straight up Mali goes on the board. It's going to be will be like enough pressure to just buckle over. Right? Like yeah. Trifco has no card draw. He doesn't have damage. His opponent's at way too much health. Gromosh has to come down here to just not die. And then it can just get traded into. Get traded into. And Lead Paint has 4, 8, 11 damage. I guess you just um, play Mali Ghost, right? Yeah. Like, everything else is just worse than Mali Ghost. This is your checkmate piece. Ah, okay. Oh! Oh! Wait, is that lethal now? 4, 8, 12. He's one damage off. Oh, he Unless can... he mortal coils the face. I mean, he can clear off Grom with Dark Bomb now. Yeah, that's true. Which, and then, like, develop a... <coughs> oh, anti kill bot. I was going to say M-Gang it, it boss. Oh, it doesn't no, really you don't want to do M-Gang boss. M-Gang boss actually is really bad for the Grim yeah. Patron combo. M-Gang boss is probably going to sit in his hand. The second Warsong Commander. So he can play the first one, and then uh, Armor Smith and Frothing, and then... Yeah. Do all these things. But it still is seeming unlikely. Yeah. He's out of cards. As long as Lead Pink can just get through this 
small little burst of... I'm actually really surprised. No weapons, no card draw from Strife Crow. Yeah. No Acolytes. That's brutal. No weapons. Like, that's just the crumble of any combo deck. That's, that's partially why a lot of people always said uh, the old Miracle Rogue defeats itself sometimes, or... You know, really big freeze mage sometimes just draws into like the bad combination of stuff, but it's very rare because those cards you have so many cards that draw well and sequence that they can kind of recover from each other. It's the difficulty of it. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of options here. You can, you can Hellfire to clear the board and then play Twilight Drake. Um, he'll still have Dragon for Blackwing Corruptor next turn. Next turn he can make a play like Blackwing Corruptor Hellfire for six damage. Emperor nah, Thorsen. Ah, a little too late. And here. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, he can shoot the face. That's right. Yeah, he can shoot the face and then Hellfire. That's 10 damage total. All right. Well, wow. There's no discards with Hellfire. <laughs> and Lead Paint has somehow been able to defeat Strife Crow despite having two unfortunate discards back to back with Soulfire in two different games. And uh, that means Strifeco's run has stopped here. Lead Paint goes on to finals to face off against Chucky. And that means we also get another appearance from this Maligos Dragon Warlock. Which I am super excited about. But how is it going to match up? I mean, we say, okay, really exciting stuff. But Chucky's running three face decks. I mean, you can't, can't yeah. barely call them aggro decks. They, he's got six Arcane Golems across his three decks. Um, lots well, of Wolf warrior, too. Warrior can handle it for sure. Or it can handle it. Druid technically can. It's one of those decks where it just curves out okay. You know, yeah. uh, innervate uh, Keeper into, like, mm -hmm. wild growth and then swipe. And you just, like, take care of everything and you run away with the game. But can the, the Dragon Warlock? The Dragon Warlock is always the big wild card because uh, the answers sometimes don't line up correctly. You need Mortal Coil to start things off. You don't have it. Wolf Rider does, like, nine damage and you just, like, lose. Yeah. So it's, it's always one of those difficult scenarios. But I... I I think we should just wait and see what happens, TJ, before we come to any conclusions. Yeah, it's going to be a really exciting final. Let's take a look at the bracket uh, before we jump into uh, the break before the final. To see exactly uh, what we've seen today. Of course, we saw, started off with Chalky and Buddy Muffins, Modern Leopard Lead Paint, Cross and Stripe. It's been a long day of, of Hearthstone games, but um, I, I'd say it's been one of the most exciting Legendary Series weeks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and if this is any taste of how the finals will be, make sure you guys tune in. June 5th to 7th, one of these guys will end up going between Chalky and Lead Paint. And I think we're going to go to a break, though, before we get into our last match of the day. Indeed.